Hello my little sugar snookumsies, welcome to the last haul video of 2021! I've got a lot of stuff that I want to show you, so let's get into it right diddy! <laughs> Alright, so before I jump into showing you everything that I bought, I quickly want to say that I accumulated all the links to the product so that if you're looking for something particular that I showed you in this video, you can get it yourself through the links in the description box. Alrighty, now let's get started! So first up is this pen pouch. It's by Lidit Lab, and this is their smaller version. It's the Hinemo one or the Hinemo design. And as you may be able to tell, it's a very small pen pouch. I do not have the biggest hands. I'm only 163 centimeters long, so I'm quite short. Um, but when I saw this pen pouch, I was immediately in love because it's a Japanese design. And you know when Japanese uh, people design something, it's usually very practical. And with the less is more thought in mind. So I really like that. So this pouch has multiple compartments and I usually lay it flat like this on my desk, but the zipper goes both ways so that you can zip it up inside out and then you can mold it into a standing pouch so it'll stand right up on your desk. And it's kind of nice and handy that you can then just twist it around and see your markers on one end and then maybe see your scissors on one hand. So if you like a standing pouch, this Lilit Lab Hinemo pouch might be the one for you. And I personally, like I said, like to use it like this and I've been using it for the last two months and it is awesome. And then in this pouch, we have some new goodies too, like this Sarasa mark on pen. So if you like to color code in your bullet journal and you like to use markers, the mark on pen is a must have in my humble opinion, because after about 30 seconds, the ink is dry and you can mark it and it doesn't smudge or ghost or bleed. So this has been a staple in my pen pouch for the last few months, because that's when I really started using the bullet journal method by Ryder Carroll to see if it really works for me. And this Sarasa mark on pen has been been a very very good addition to that method. Then I bought this very overpriced travel company brass ruler. I think this was about 18 euros so that's a little over 19 dollars I think. Um, it's a brass ruler, it's only 16 centimeters long and Obviously, it just looks very fancy, so that's what caught my attention. But what I also wanted was a fancy ruler that fits in my little pen pouch because I bring this pen pouch to work and I have a really big ruler and one of those triangle ones that they use for math, but that doesn't fit in here. But every time I wanted to change something up in my journal or draw a line, I would be without a ruler. So this one, fits in my new pen pouch and I love it. It's very heavy. And what I realized later on is that it has this um, ridge that makes sure that your pen doesn't hit the ruler itself, so the nib. But what does hit the ruler itself is just a plastic part of your pen so that it never ever is able to ruin the nib of your fine liners, which has happened to me in the past before with rulers that don't have this little ridge that stands up. So that is uh, a good investment in the end because I've never had a functional ruler like that. So that is my third purchase. Now let's go over to notebooks because that's what you need when you do journaling, personal journaling and bullet journaling like I do. So first of all, I have a Habanichi Techo here. And if I understood correctly, if I use Google right, Techo already means notebook. So when you say Hobonichi Techo notebook, you're basically saying Hobonichi notebook notebook. So saying Hobonichi Techo should be enough. <laughs> uh, and this is their plain notebook. I think this was actually pretty expensive in my opinion. I think it was around 15 to 17 euros. Um, but it's supposed to have Tomo River paper. Never ever used that before. But it's supposed to be really good for people who like to write with a fountain pen and I'm a fountain pen lover. So I really wanted to try this. I kept it wrapped because I don't have any use for it now, but I think somewhere, uh, yeah, mid-year 2022, I will be able to use this for like journaling. Um, and then I'll be able to like review it and give it a try. So this is the first notebook that I got. 
Then we've got two Leuchtturm notebooks. So I'm saying Leuchtturm because Leuchtturm is a German brand. So you pronounce it as Leuchtturm and not as Lecturm or Lechturm. <laughs> um, I once pronounced Leuchtturm for the first time on my other YouTube channel and I got a good review from an actual Ger German lady. So I'm gonna try and do them proud, <laughs> make them proud. So um, the first Leuchtturm notebook that I got is this sage green one. This one is going to be for my personal journal, um, which you have seen on my YouTube channel many times. I now have this muted pink powder one, or powder pink one, and now I have this sage green one. It's the 120 gram paper edition, so the pages are a little thicker than their regular schmegler paper, and I already like how smooth and soft this paper feels, so I can't wait to journal in this. Uh, because my personal journal is going to be more about my experiences and how I feel in daily life. So this needs to be very easy to write on. So that's the second journal that I got. Then we have another Leuchtturm journal. And this is the one that is in collaboration with a writer, Carol, who invented the bullet journal method. Now, I've been trying the bullet journal method out for the last two months in an Archer and Olive notebook. I don't like Archer and Olive paper, um, but I do like Leuchtturm paper. So I got myself the original bullet journal uh, because it has some instructions. And because I'm pretty new to this, I was like, let me just give this a try. And also it looks pretty and it also has 120 grams paper and I can't wait to give this actual bullet journal a try. This one is going to be for my business and work tasks. So this is going to be very, very minimal. It's going to be very messy. It's not going to be really pretty. Um, I'm going to make pretty stuff in my personal journal. So I will have two different notebooks with two different goals. So stay on the lookout for that because I'm going to set up this journal and this one with you, I think, late December or the beginning of January. Now we have some other stuff. Um, these are notebook covers. These are A5 notebook covers. This one I got from Etsy. I will link the shop owner's link below. It is a leather A5 cover. And as you can see, it has really nice inserts and it was really hard to find uh, an A5 journal cover with inserts like this because what i want is to be able to put like stickers in here so for example these are stickers that came with the Leuchtturm bullet journal um and i just want to be able to put them in here so that i can have easy access and if i have like a receipt or something and most of these covers had like business card slots but i live in the netherlands and honestly we don't really use business cards anymore so um i don't need them but this is awesome and it also came with a pen slot which i didn't realize and you were able to choose different closures. I am a little bummed that I chose this one. I wish I chose the one with the elastic because this one is a little, it's a little rough. The click system is a little rough, but maybe that's because it's brand new. So hopefully it gets a little softer, but I'm afraid it's gonna rip the leather. But uh, we'll see about that. Um, but what I also liked about this uh, notebook cover is that, as you can see, I was able to customize it. So I used the first letter of every name that I have. So my first name is Kaya Quintana and then Broekhuis is my last name. So I didn't just go for the initials. I just went for every letter <laughs> that is in my name because I like the um, short version of it, KQB. <laughs> so even if someone else has like a similar notebook cover, I will know this one is mine because there's probably not a lot of people who have um, KQB as the uh, shortcut to their name or initials. So this will be the cover for my business bullet journal because I wanted something that is a bit more tough and rustic looking because if I go to an appointment, I don't want to come across as super like girly or something. I'm not there, um, you know, I'm, I'm there as an entrepreneur and my gender doesn't matter. So I try to keep my covers and journals and planners for my business very neutral or somewhat more edgier. <laughs> And then this one is anything but edgier. Oh my god, this is so cute. So this is for my inner five-year-old. This is a Hobonichi cover. I think it came out this year. And it doesn't come with this plastic cover that I put over it. I bought this cover separately as well. Because this cover, uh, the original cover, has like linen cloth and or it's made from linen and cloth. And it's very, very creamy. 
Um, and knowing myself, I'm a very clumsy person. If I don't add like a cover on this, it'll be gross and dirty looking within like a week. <laughs> so that's why I bought the clear cover. And this cover is going to be for my personal journal because when, uh, yeah, I don't really take my personal journal anywhere. It's just gonna stay at home. And I want it to look cute. I wanna look at my personal journal and feel like writing because it makes me happy just looking at the cover. And so yeah, this cover definitely does it. So I got this at Hobonichi and I love it. I can't say more about it because <laughs> it's just really cute. Look at these little happy kids just doing everyday stuff and enjoying it. And I feel like journaling should be like uh, an everyday thing that you enjoy. So the cover is very fitting to me. All right, so I got these Tombow uh, brush pens. I already had the purple one, but I didn't realize it because <laughs> apparently this purple one came in a set that I had bought previously. And then I didn't realize I bought a double, but. You know what? I just have a backup now. So I got this purple one. It's 623. Um, then I got this gray one, which is N75. I got this brown one, which is 977. We've got um, this 10 colored one. It's 992. And then we have a 942, which is like a very soft brown shade. So these colors I bought because I was watching a Lindsay Skirbles video. I really like her video. She has a very minimalistic setup in her bullet journals and planners. And she was using mainly these colors. And I was like, oh my God, these look so soft and chill on the eyes that I really want them as well. So I use these colors for my headers and it's been working out really well. And the reason why I like these colors is because they're very soft on the eyes. If I use two like if the colors are too vibrant, I get distracted and my brain just shuts down if I have too many distractions in my bullet journal. So soft colors are very, very um, good for me. And I'm really happy that I got these and no worries, I've got some swatches at the end. Then I got myself three new fountain pens. Um, first off, <laughs> I thought this was a, a Japanese brand because it says Kaweko and in my brain it sounded Japanese, but it's not. It's actually a German brand, so it's very fitting for my Luchturm, um bullet journals. <laughs> so this is a German brand and apparently they have a lot of uh, fountain pens you can choose from. So these are the Kaweko Sports Edition um, and this one is just a normal one in white. And I also have this pink one in Pattaya and it's like a milky resin. Um, so it's very cute. And the reason why I got two is because I bought this white one with an extra fine nip and the pink one is with a fine nip. Fountain pens come with different nip sizes and I didn't know. So this is an extra fine one. And honestly, it looks very pretty. Okay, so like I said, I didn't know that fountain pens came with different nip sizes. <laughs> I thought they were all just kind of the same size, but this is an extra fine one and the nip looks really nice. I don't think it's actual gold because these fountain pens weren't that expensive. I think they were like 20 bucks each, each, so very affordable and they write pretty nicely. And this is the fine nib, which just came in silver. And the fine nib is a little bit thicker. And the reason why I bought two different nibs, which are actually um, both really fine, is because I have a very small um, way of handwriting. So my E's and my A's and my O's usually just fill up with ink if I have a nib that is too big. And these are so fine that I can still see my O's and my A's and my I's, um, or E's I should say, without them being filled up with ink and just looking like black little dots <laughs> so i'm very happy with these um fountain pens also because they're short enough to fit into my pouch so if i ever want to bring them with me that is no problem and then the last fountain pen that i got is this lamy safari also a german brand um this used to be super popular when i was um 
like a child, you had to learn to write with a fountain pen back in, the, back in the day. I don't know if they still do that in the Netherlands, but you had to learn how to write in cursive with a, felt, uh, with a fountain pen. So that's why I'm so addicted to fountain pens because I like the way they write. They force me to like take my time and just write very pretty. And this is an extra fine nib as well. It's a little longer, it's a little heavier, and I like this fountain pen for like longer periods of writing in my normal journal. So it's a really good one. And then I also bought some fountain pen ink. So this one, the first one is, is by Diamine and it's in the color Ox Blood because I like that vintage look. It looks really nice on like creamy, slightly yellow paper. And that's exactly what the Louvturm uh, journals have. So this looks really great on their paper. And I put that ink in my Lamy Safari. So that's this combo. And then from Kaweco, I've never used any of their inks. So I put this really nice um, sunrise orange shade in the white sport. And I put the caramel brown in the pink fountain pen. And let me show you the swatches. All right, so these are the swatches. And here are the Tombow swatches. I swatched everything on Archer and Olive notebook paper because that is the whitest paper I have in my house so that you hopefully can get a good impression of what it may look like on your own notebook and you know no promises I mean everyone has like a different screen and it might show up a little different but this is like the best view I can give you of these Tumboy Tumbo brush pens then I have the Sunset Orange by Kaweco over here. As you can see, this is also the extra fine nib, so it's very, very thin. Then the brown one is underneath there. It's very, very subtle. I like it. And then we have the Ox Blood by Diamine over here, which I put into my Lamy. Uh, but I don't like how the Ox Blood Red comes across on this page. I feel like all of the inks that I bought work better on a slightly yellow colored paper so keep that in mind um that white paper may have a different look when you decide to choose your inks and that's it guys i hope you liked this last haul of 2021 like i said i am about to set up these two journals in the last two months of or last two weeks of december or maybe even the first two weeks of january so if you want to see how i'm doing my personal journal and my business bullet journal stay tuned subscribe like this video and let me know if you like anything that i bought in this haul and if you have any suggestions when it comes to ink or brush pens or covers do let me know in the comments below because i like receiving your help because i want to get better at this journaling thing all right, thank you so much. I love you, goodbye. See you later.